I am here to warn you about the dangers of getting involved with the cult. You may think that you are too smart, too normal, or too in the know to be deceived, but unfortunately, you're not. None of us really are. Psychiatrist Robert J. Lifton, former professor at Harvard Medical School, created this list of four criteria that defines a movement as a cult. Behavioral control, informational control, thought control, and emotional control. In her lecture, The Psychology of Cults, psychologist Roxanne Rasti listed some common misconceptions that people have. The first one is that members of the group are very easy to spot. They're the weirdos that wear strange robes all the time and live in communes. This is an untrue stereotype. A study conducted by renowned expert on brainwashing Margaret Singer determined that an estimated 5,000 cults are currently operating in the United States with an overwhelming 20,000 members. These are covert operations. Chances are you know somebody in a cult and you aren't even aware of it. The second misconception is the secret theory. This is the idea that people go out looking to join a cult. This isn't true. First of all, these groups don't just come out and say that they're a cult. They are very covert in their marketing. In her lecture, Rasti concluded that the majority of people in cults come from middle class backgrounds, are fairly educated, and are not psychologically disturbed prior to joining. The third misconception is that cults are full of weak, weird, and emotionally unstable people. This is also completely false. Plenty of normal people are convinced to join cults. According to Psychology Today, Adrian Furnham stated that cult members are often between marriages, jobs, or life stages. They're vulnerable because they seek something to help them regain their identity. And instead of something positive, unfortunately, they stumble into something dangerous. The truth is, anybody can stumble into a cult. Members are often recruited at a very sensitive period of their lives when they have just gone through a very great personal loss or tragedy. Now, most cults have a charismatic leader at the head that thinks of themselves as a deity or superior. According to Dangerous Devotion, a 2015 documentary conducted by the History Channel, most cult leaders show 9 out of 10 signs of narcissistic personality disorder. The power dynamic of a cult can be visually represented by the capital letter T. The leader is at the top and they get all the gain from the cult, getting all the money and the benefits and having all the power and their followers are at the bottom, completely under their control. Now, a power-hungry narcissist can be intoxicating and ultimately very, very dangerous. Cults use thought reform, a type of brainwashing, to get their members completely devoted. You can do this by exposing members to drugs or sexual abuse, or even convincing them that the cult is their family. You may be wondering, if cults are so horrible, then why don't their members just wise up and leave? Well, this is no small feat, but a lucky few manage to escape. There are many reasons for staying in a cult. The members believe that what their leaders say is the honest truth. And they feel like they've invested too much time and energy into it to give up. They also may feel a sense of betrayal about leaving, even if they know that it's the best choice for them personally. For some cult members, most painfully, leaving means isolating yourself forever from your closest friends and family. But escape is vital because it means freedom. Nobody deserves to spend their life in blind servitude to an undeserving cause, or to risk their time, money, and maybe even their life. Cult members are normal people just like you and I. And after they get out, they may feel like they have gaps in their lives. 
because while they were on the inside, their peers were starting families, starting their careers, and achieving their dreams. More than anything, these people need our support to rebuild their lives. I would like to thank you for listening, and I implore you, when you hear about an experience somebody has had in a cult, please consider the human aspects and be empathetic. Don't be judgmental. You may be helping somebody get their life back.